precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Brian Mason, and this is the third part of the study. His word was with power. Jesus is all in all. And as we have that unction of the Holy Spirit, then we know the presence of God with us, no matter where we might go. And it is quite wonderful that it is the very presence of God which enables us in these days to, to stand against very, very dark forces at work in this world. Now, let us turn to St. Luke's Gospel in chapter 4 and from the 38th verse. And he arose out of the synagogue. Yes, Jesus had been teaching of the Word of God in the synagogue. And that there had been in that synagogue a man who had an unclean devil, as the word tells us. And that unclean devil recognized that there in the midst was someone whom he recognized, recognized as the Holy One, recognized as God himself in the midst. And it is from that that Jesus had rebuked that devil. That devil had to give way to the authority of the Son of God himself. And there was such a fame, we're told, that went out right throughout everywhere in the country. And there were those who wanted to, to meet with Jesus. And the next next place he went to as he came out of the synagogue was to be the, into the home of one of his disciples, Simon Peter. And when he got there he found that there was a need and the need was Simon Peter's wife, his mother, who was sick. So having cast out the devil out of that man, we now see Jesus come into contact with this dear, dear lady who, who were not told had a devil, we were just told that she was sick with a great fever. And those who were there, which would have included Simon Peter and his wife, they knew that in the midst had come one who was not taken, taken by surprise, who was ready for every situation, whatever that situation might be. And they told Jesus about about this dear lady and her fever. And Jesus, he went to her and we're told that he stood over her. And what did he do? This time, instead of rebuking the devil, he rebuked the fever. And the fever had to give way. The, se the fever had to go because this was the presence of, of God in the midst. And God, where his presence is, then we know that he will be working. And it's the same in our own lives, that where God is within us, and the very presence of God is continuously with us, that wherever we go, we will take the presence of God with us. And that 
whatever situation we might meet along the way, day by day. Never to be taken by surprise. Because God is there. It's God at work, work in us, at work through us, when we're his vessels. And we have to be clean vessels. Vessels that are filled with the Holy Spirit. Vessels that have been cleansed by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The redemption. Oh, it's a, it's a, a such a marvelous word. Such a beautiful word. Redemption. A redemption to be. What? To be bought. We were bought with a price. We were helpless, hopeless, totally lost, without hope in this world, without God, until we came to Jesus Christ himself. It cost him everything. It cost him his life his blood. And is there anything more precious in this world than to know that we have been bought with the price of the blood of the Son of God? And we can never thank him enough. When we've been cleansed, fully cleansed, with that precious blood, of God himself. We were, and you may be, I don't know who, who I'm speaking to, but God knows. You may be without hope in this world. You may be a sinner who's not come to thee cleansing blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and your sin is weighting you down your sin is troubling you and you're being convicted of your sin but there's hope hope for all whoever it might be in this world because Jesus didn't just die for one or two he died for all and he lives, the importance is that he lives, that he is a living saviour, he's a living Jesus Christ, that God is still alive and God seeks to live his life in those who will come to him to bring the weight of their sin, to bring their burden to him and let him lift it. Let him take away that burden, that weight of troubles. You may consider yourself as the worst sinner there's ever been. Paul did that. He considered himself to be the worst. And whoever we are, myself included, we've all been that way. But when Jesus comes in, Jesus comes in and lifts that, that weight away because we see that he and he alone died personally for myself. And when that is seen, then we're, we're ready to give him. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in my heart for thee. Yes, sin is a terrible thing. But it's, it's in the human nature. And when Adam rebelled against God and was shut out from the Garden of Eden, God had the answer. God had the way through his own son. 
the Lamb of God that, that John the Baptist saw. The Lamb of God that takes away not just the sin of the world, but takes away from individuals. It has to be individually accepted, individually applied. And Jesus, when he came from the wilderness, having been greatly tested by the devil for a season, we're told, that having overcome the devil in that wilderness, he went and was baptized of John. And John saw beyond water baptism. He saw one who was to give his life for all. One who not only would call sinners to repentance, but provide the means of having sin taken away from them. The great sin bearer who took the sins of all to the cross of Calvary took upon it in his own body on that cross. And through each drop of his blood, as it drained away, who cry at the end of it, it is finished. It, was a, it is a perfect work that Jesus did. A perfect redemption. A perfect cleansing. And it is with that joy, that assurance. Have you the assurance of sins forgiven? Do you know that Jesus, he died for you? Have you asked him into your heart? Asked him to take away that weight of sin? asked him to become your very life, to give you his life, that life which constantly gives itself to others, that life which is not centered upon itself, that life which is a life just like the Lord Jesus would have given himself during his earthly ministry. And we can, we are, we're, we are as him in this world when we're his. And there he was, meeting the situation, and there we shall be too, meeting whatever situation, whatever circumstance he might bring us into to rejoice in him, to know that the love of God, which passes all understanding, is still there today for the broken-hearted, for those who are in despair, for those who see that there is no, no hope in this world, that there is it's all in Jesus Christ. And you are invited by him. Come unto me, all the travail on our heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Oh, some of the most wonderful words that have ever been spoken. In the world you won't have peace. In the world you will be greatly troubled. But in him, and in him alone, you will be able to rest in him, have the assurance of sins forgiven, and know that 
wherever you go, what it is the presence of God that will be with you. And here we are with this dear, dear mother of Simon's, Simon's wife. It would have seemed very hard for her at that time, greatly troubled with that fever. But yet, one came into the midst who was greater than that fever. He had the answer to the need. And what did he do when he rebuked that fever? We're told immediately she arose and ministered unto them. It was gone, straight away. There was no wait for it. And that's the same when we come to Jesus with our need, with the weight of our sin, and say unto him, I have sinned. I know that I have sinned. I know that I am a sinner. But you are the Saviour. You are the one who died in my place. I should have been the one who died. Yes, but we have died. Died on the cross at Calvary with him. Crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. That's what Paul could say. Can you say that? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. Oh, the life, the life of God at living in us, living through us, and no control by anyone. Purely God, doing what he wants to do, pouring out his life to others through us. Amazing, isn't it? Astounding, isn't it? Only God could do that. But it wasn't just the man in the synagogue who'd had the, the devil cast out. Or Simon Peter's wife's mother who had her fever healed. There were many, many others. And we're told now, verse 40, now when the sun was setting, yes, the day coming to its close, but Jesus was still there. Whether, whatever time of day it was, whatever time of night, and he's still there today to meet the needs of those who will come to him. Come to him believing. Come to him expectantly that he will meet them at the very point of their need. Whether your life has been affected through alcohol or drugs, or you are addicted to something else or whatever, or you're just an ordinary person, He's there, and he will meet the very needs of your heart. It's the heart that's, that God is concerned with. The heart which, because of sin, is a dark heart. Has cut you off, cut sinners off from a holy God. And it needs the cleansing of the blood of Jesus. 
O come, lost, guilty one. Yes, guilty because of sin within the heart. Without hope, we come. Will you come today to him? And many came to Jesus, even on that very day, as the sun was setting. All they that had be, had any sick, any sick, sick in spirit, sick in soul, sick in body, Whatever the sickness might be, or whatever it is that's kept you away from God, whatever it is that you've had your doubts that God, that there is a God. There is a God, yes. A God who wants to, to come into your life wants to give you the very best that he could give, wants to give you that sense of rest and of peace and of his presence. Could there be anything more assuring in this, in this world of sin, this world of woe, this world which is so troubled? There's no rest or peace in this world because the one who is against God, the very devil himself, will see to that. Come to Jesus. Just as these, these dear ones, they were rare, each one of them was precious in the sight of God, and he knew their need. And the one who had the answer to their need was there in the midst. They could see him in the midst. And they came expectantly. They would have heard of what happened in the synagogue. They would have heard of what happened in Simon Peter, the house where his mother was wonderfully healed. And as they came with different diseases, he caused diverse diseases, brought them unto him. And what did Jesus do? He laid his hands upon every one of them, no exception, and healed them. And also there were those who had devils. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, recognition again like the one in the synagogue, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. There was recognition there, right at the very early part of Jesus' ministry, of who he happened to be. In these days, there are those who, who will call themselves priests and ministers, and they won't accept the very fundamentals about Jesus, won't accept the virgin birth, won't accept his deity, won't accept his resurrection from the dead. And if they're not accepting that, how are they going to accept that Jesus can forgive sinners? Because are they accepting redemption and the atoning, the atoning blood of Jesus? Oh, the God will stare us afresh in these days. And what did Jesus do? He rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. They knew. He, these devils knew. There were so many in these days 
who do not know, who are blinded by the God of this world. And it is the grace of God that is needed to open blind eyes and blind hearts, open hardened hearts, and bring hell-deserving sinners to the cleansing fountain of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That we can praise God from the very depths of our hearts that that fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins that sinners plunge beneath that flood can still lose all their guilty stains. Have you been washed and cleansed through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? Father, these are very sacred moments as we have considered thy Son and how he came. He came to save sinners and he gave his life for all who will still come to him. And may you draw many, even this day, unto him, that they will see that they are guilty sinners in need of repentance. And by faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, will give their burden, their sin to him and ask him to come into their lives and to cleanse them through his precious blood that they shall be born again of the Spirit of God and brought to know thee, O Father, as, as God through the living Christ. For this is as that through that name which is above all other names, your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and for thy glory. Amen.